Okay, good morning class. So at this point we're looking at um, the examples for exercise 1.7. So uh, 1.6 was homework. Yes, so it's um, examples for exercise 1.7. So at this point, you would have noticed out of exercise 1.6, that the certain cases where when we multiply we will have in some cases you have a two term solution not so now there is a rule that applies there ok because if we now looking in products resulting in the sum in of difference of two cubes sum or difference of two cubes the product of a plus b times a squared minus a b plus b squared results in the expression a cube plus b cube. Did you see that? Okay, you can't see. And the product of a minus b and a squared plus a b plus b squared resulted in a cube minus b cube. So from there we can conclude that a cube plus b cube can be written as if I go in the reverse, which is factorizing now, a plus b into a squared minus a b plus b squared, and a cube minus b cube is equal to a minus b into a squared plus a b plus b squared. Then we are told that note that a squared minus uh, plus or minus a b plus b squared cannot be factorized any further using only real number coefficients so that means to say yeah, let me explain to you now what it means that means to say that you see this trinomial here once you factorize sorry the trinomial here, once you factorize the difference and the sum of cubes this trinomial can never factorize into um, rational values or irrational values. The solutions that's going to come from that trinomial is going to be what we call non-real. So just at this point you must note, so don't worry about non-real and all that solutions yet, but all you need to note is that this cubic function here will never be able to factorize. With the, with the real values. Okay, that is what it says here. Note that a squared plus or minus a b plus b squared. Where is the other one coming from? D. Can you see that? Wait, wait. Here and here. No? They, that's where they're referring to. Yes, Michael, what do you say? Perfect squared trinomial. You see, for the perfect, factorize this for me. Let's see. Factorize. You must say it's a trinomial. What do you want to get? So square root, the square root yes. It's A, A, B, B, yes. both plus. No? Is that what you're saying? Or you could have written it at A plus A plus B all squared. You're saying that D? Yes. All right. Now that can be written out twice like it. Not so. Mm -hmm. Now let's multiply it up. So you know, A times A is A squared. A times B is A, B. B times A is A, B plus b squared. So it's going to be a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. Can you see? I'm going to give you that. So is that the correct presenta uh, representation of a squared plus ab plus b squared? No. Whatever factors you use in that trinomial will never be able to factorize. Okay? For real values for uh, the coefficients. Okay? So this coming to that rule that, that rule says, and you guys can write this down, is that for the sum and difference of cubes, this is the rule. Okay, we've got the first term, cube, plus the second term, cube. If that is the case. That will be factorized into the first term, 
Whatever sign is here, so it's plus the second term into. So that's your binomial. Okay? That will be your first term squared. Now if that is plus, then here must be minus. So it's going to be the first term times the second term plus the last term, which is the second term, squared. That's a root. Okay? I'm going to show you now in terms of variables, okay? The negative, if that's negative, there's negative and there will be positive. Okay, so let's put that into um, to, to variables. Maybe it will make more sense now. So if the sum was x cubed minus x cubed minus y cubed, then what would this be? You have factorize it. The first term, the cube root of x cubed, x. Plus or minus? Minus. minus. Cube root of y cube? Do you see that? So what do I do with the first term? Square, square it. it. So it's going to become x squared. Plus or minus? minus. Plus. Plus. It's always opposite to that. X, y, x times y? X, y. And the last term must be? Y. We just simplify from there. It's x minus y, x squared plus x y plus y squared. So what's negative y times negative y? What's the y squared? You guys understand? Yes. Right. That's so then, yeah. Okay, then there must be the opposite operation. So if you're going to have, if you're going to take a negative there, then I must consider the negative. Why? Because that must result in that positive. Okay. It must always be the opposite sign. Why must it be the opposite sign? Because when I multiply the story out, let's see, it's going to be x cubed plus x, y, x uh, squared y plus x y squared minus x squared y minus x y squared minus y cubed so if it's opposite signs you will see that this happens it cancels that's why the signs in the middle must always be opposite to the binomial sign so it doesn't matter what the second to the sign you must just be opposite okay. so what if it was a negative for the first guy? there is then a negative in your phone Okay, you're right, 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 finish. What's your question, Michael, again? So if there was a negative in front of the x root? In this x, yeah? Yeah. Then we factorize the negative before we do it. So the question is, if there's a negative here, what do we do then? The negative is there, you first factorize uh, that thing, and then you, you do your thing. Okay. Anything else? Bit confusing, no? Let's do another one. Can I do another one? Are you still writing, Michael? Yes, sir. That's the right thing. We're going to look at a couple of examples that we had yesterday. was out of exercise 1.6 number 1b
Okay? So those are the sums out of exercise 1.6, which resulted in uh, the difference of cube or the sum of cubes. Not so. Those were the sums in particular. It was of concern. Not so. So if you look at the first one, what did we say? We want. Uh, let's check if this b was of the, the the case that we are talking about. Is the first term squared? No. Yes. Is the sign opposite to the first bracket? Yes. yes. What's a times one? One a. Is the last term squared? Yes. So there we can see that the sum for the difference of, of two cubes will apply. So what do I do? I multiply my first and the last. So a times a squared, a cubed. Negative one times one, negative one. And that was your answer. Not so? Right, let's look at another one. Now let's treat this one a bit different. Let's say this was blank. Would we be able to write in here exactly what is needed to give us the difference of cubes? Let's check. What must happen to the first term? We must square it. So what is 2a all squared? 4a squared. 4a squared. Is it the x? It's a. This is plus, so here goes. Minus. 2a times 3? 6a. Or x, no? What is the last term squared? 9. And wasn't that what was given to us? So what can I do here if that is the case? You can multiply the first and the last, last term. So what is 2a times 4a squared? 8a cubed. 3 times positive 9? And that was the answer that you had. Okay, you guys understand? Yes. Look at the next one as well. Again, let's take this out. Let's see if we can derive what's supposed to have been here for us to result in the sum of the difference of cubes the first term must be squared so this is going to be b squared what about my sign plus what's 4 times b 4b and the last term must be squared positive people you will notice that the last term here Will always be positive. Will always be positive. Okay. You still don't sound convinced, no? No problem. Let's look at another one. Now this was taken out of a different textbook, okay? Because why? This textbook um, in uh, four point uh, one point six. You actually have to derive the rule on your own. That is what number two's question was. Not some two or three. Okay? And they ask you what you notice, then you have to write your, your findings. Not so. Yes, I didn't finish the sum. What's b times b squared? b cubed. Negative 4 times 16? And that's the answer you guys got then, eh? So as I said, um, this textbook, um, you have to derive the rule there and there. Okay. So let's look at these sums. We're considering this. This is from a different textbook. This is from your other textbook, which is the Mine Action Series. This comes from this textbook. Okay. Sum and difference of two cubes. It says consider the following products. So let's see if we understood what I was trying to say. Is the rule evident here? What? Is the first term squared? Yes. yes. Is the sign opposite? Yes. What's x times y? X y. What's y all squared? Y squared. 
So that means to say I can multiply the first and the last, which is going to give us x cubed plus y cubed. You all understand? What if the rule did not apply? Then I would multiply the whole story up. Okay. So let's see what they had there. You see, they multiplied everything out here. And they got that answer. Let's look at the next one. Is the rule applying here? Is the first sub squared? Yes. yes. Is the sign opposite? Yes. yes. What's x times 2? 2x. Is the last sub squared? Yes. So what is this answer going to be? x cubed plus? Plus 8. 8. Not so? <laughs> x cubed plus 8. Let's see. x cubed plus 8. You guys understand? Yes. Let's look at another one. You don't have to write this down. Eh? Right. Is the first term squared? Yes. yes. Is the sign opposite? Yes. yes. Is the last term squared? Yes. yes. So I can multiply the first and the last. So what's 2x times 4x squared? 8x eight, cubed. Eight what's 3 times 9? 27. And there we go. Can you see that? Is that rule evident here? First term squared? Yes. Is the sign opposite? Yes. Now, if that first term was squared and the sign was not opposite, and the last term was squared, could I apply the rule? No. All the conditions must be met for you to apply the rule. Okay, you guys understand? Yes. So, is that rule evident here? Yes. yes. So, the final answer is? 27x cubed plus 1. Can you see that? Let's look at E. Is the rule evident here? Yes. So it's going to be x cubed minus y cubed. Is the rule evident here? Yes. So it's going to give you x cubed minus. Okay. You guys understand? Again, if you don't understand it, it will be safer for you to multiply. Okay? But in the, worth saying that as well, that if you're going to look out for the rule and understand the rule now, later on, when we do factorization of cubes, but after the job is done. Can you, you understand? So you are already devising the rule now, so later on when it comes to factorization, you know the rule. Okay. At this point, we'll stop the video. Um, the full lesson can be found in the description box.